Hi, I'm Alan, and welcome to Sunday School Made Simple. Thank you for joining us as we continue to explore the Word of God using the Precepts for Living commentary. It's important for us to recognize that our grace, God's grace, not our works, are what justify us before God. I remember when I was in college, I was very much in a works-based righteousness mindset. I thought that I could work really hard and that would cause God to love me. That if I did all the right things, that was what made me the best. And that I tried to make other people who were around me recognize that they too needed to get right in order to be acceptable to God. But at a certain point, I encountered somebody who was able to be used by God and experience God's grace so that when I made my, had my shortcomings, they were able to appreciate me and restore me, which helped me to recognize it wasn't what I did. It was God's grace that made me righteous before God. We too are invited to do the same, and we'll explore that in today's lesson. Remember to hit the bell at the bottom of this video to subscribe to our show so that you don't miss out on any new lessons, and like us. Take your teaching to the next level as well with our full lessons and additional invaluable resources at preceptsforlivingonline.com. Subscribe to gain access on your tablet, phone, or laptop. Go to preceptsforlivingonline.com and get your resources today. Now, as we continue this quarter, we're still focused on discipleship and mission. Each week, we make Sunday School simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the word, then teaching tips for those of you who teach. Today's lesson title is Call to Righteousness. Let's explore the text with our lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will summarize Paul's teaching that justification is by grace and not acts of keeping the law, rejoice that we need not atone for our sin ourselves by works, and express thankfulness for Jesus, our perfect Savior. Let's read our first set of scripture verses from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. And in the New Living Translation, it says, but now, God has made, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We were made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who you are, who we are. What's important to know from these verses? There's one important point, that God made righteousness available to everyone through Jesus Christ. For all of Israel's history, righteousness was thought to be through keeping the law. All of the Jewish people hearing Paul's message only knew how to have a right relationship with God by keeping the law they received from Moses. The commandments, the sacrifices in the temple, and the interpretations of the law that the Pharisees had had all been a constant burden and reminder of the people's own unfaithfulness to God. They had never kept the law completely. But the prophets and the law itself promised a way to be right with God, a new covenant and a better relationship. The prophets also foretold that this new covenant, this new righteousness, would be for people from every nation, not just the children of Israel. This new righteousness is through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul is letting the listeners know that believing in Jesus Christ as the fulfiller of the old covenant and the giver of righteousness allows us to be made right with God. The next set of verses for our explanation are from Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 26. And again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. For everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. There are three key points from these verses. One, Paul makes the point that everyone has sinned. Two, God gave Jesus as the sacrifice for our sin. 
And three, the sacrifice can make everyone right with God for all time. The first several chapters of Romans are all a building argument that Paul is making for why we need righteousness through Jesus Christ. Both the Jews and those who knew the law, as well as the Gentiles who did not, all sinned against God. The Israelites did not keep the law. They couldn't keep it perfectly, and they had violated God's covenant and God's law. Before Jesus, the Israelites had to make sacrifices in order to push back the punishment for their sin. But Jesus is given as the ultimate sacrifice for sin, shedding his blood so that we can finally be made right with God. We all deserved punishment for our sin, and death is sin's natural result. God showed his own faithfulness, grace, and love by giving Jesus to die for us. And rather than allow everyone who ever lived to experience eternal punishment, Jesus gave his sinless life to redeem us for all eternity. God keeps the covenant through Jesus Christ. When we believe in Jesus as the only one who makes us right with God, we are no longer sinners, but can now live righteous lives with God. And that's good news. The last verses from our lesson today come from Romans chapter 3, verses 27 through 31. Again, reading from the New Living Translation. Can we boast then that what we have done, that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. After all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. There is only one God, and he makes people right with himself only by faith, whether Jews or Gentiles. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. There are two key points from these final verses in the lesson. One, we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. And two, we are still called to fulfill the law by faith. This is one of the most important points Paul makes in Romans, among the many points that he makes. Our salvation, our justification, redemption, righteousness, and restored relationship with God is not by our own works. We cannot work enough to make God accept us. There's nothing we can do to make ourselves right with God. None of us has kept the law perfectly. Sin keeps us from right, right, right relationship with God. But God has acted on our behalf. God has given Jesus Christ to die for our sin. That's grace. We did not deserve to be made right with God. Jesus didn't deserve to die, but he did. And because he died for our sins, we are made right with God again. We are saved. We do not need to do anything else to be in right relationship with God except have faith in Jesus. But we are not called to abandon the works of the law because we are saved or made right. We are called to keep the commands of God through the power of God. We can live godly called out lives as a result of our right relationship with God. It is when we keep God's law by faith that we really do his will. Oh, well, now that we know what we should know, we should ask ourselves what we should feel as a result of today's lesson. We should feel excited that we are saved by grace through faith. Our own works are a failure at pleasing God. We cannot do anything to make ourselves right with God. No amount of good deeds, trying to do what the law says, or saying the right things can make us right with God. We can't uh, make ourselves right by going to the right places or uh, trying to act like we're doing the right things. Only faith in Jesus Christ who died for us and rose for us will make us right with God. We should feel peace when we place our faith in Jesus for righteousness. We are glad that God has freed us from sin through his own blood. Now we can love and serve God with a clear conscience because we have been made right through faith. Well, what's important to do as a result of today's lesson? We should thank Jesus. It doesn't get any more simple than that. 
We are saved because of his sacrifice. We are made right because of his righteousness. We are delivered because of his death. We are accepted and put in right relationship with God because God acted through Christ, not because we acted right. Now we can act, now we can act right because Jesus gives us the power to do it. Our sins are forgiven. We are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. That's our text for today. Now let's talk about how to effectively teach this lesson. Don't forget to begin each lesson with prayer. Pray that your students would be able to have receptive hearts and minds to be obedient to God's word. Pray that you would use a variety of creative teaching methods to help your students learn. And pray that you would be able to allow your students to apply what they have learned once they've finished receiving what you have taught. First, we'll begin with our hook, or what we use to open the lesson. You can go to preceptsforlivingonline.com and download the In Focus stories if you're subscribed. You can also have your students answer the question at the end of the In Focus story in the book. The question is, how can we embrace and show grace towards ourselves, those closest to us, and those we do not know? Because we all need grace. Second, we have our book or present the scriptures. Invite volunteers to read the entire scripture, the focal verses, and then ask them what stood out to them or resonated from the verses. Then you can ask the class to answer the two questions in the search the scriptures section. Third, we have our look or explore the meaning. You can have the class read the in-depth sections of the lesson and then ask the students one or two of the questions in the discuss the meaning and allow the groups in class to share their responses with the whole class. Last, you need the took or next steps for application. Invite a volunteer to read the liberating lesson. And then also read the application for activation. These are great ways to move beyond just uh, hearing about the lesson to figuring out how to apply it in your lives. Well, it's been a fantastic lesson, but it's time for us to talk mailbag. We are so excited again to have our very own Reverend Dave here with us. Uh, again, he's been an artist, he's been a creative director, he's been a missionary, uh, just being able to share the gospel so many places, and so it's perfect for him to, to help bring his perspective. Thank you for being here again. Absolutely, glad to be here. And so today's question um, actually again comes from uh, our audience members, but. I know it because it's, it's one of those ones that's directly tied to the lesson and it's why is it that it's, why is it important that f salvation is by grace through faith and not our works today? You know, that's something we read in the scripture, but what does that mean for us today? Yeah, when you think about <clears throat> the good news of the gospel, um, it has to be good news. It has to be something worth proclaiming. Mm -hmm. and. If the story is you work hard and God will save you, that's not good news. That's bad news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good news is that Christ brings salvation in full and his salvation is complete and his salvation is one that pursues and chases down his children that he loves and his um, God's children that he loves. And so we know that this salvation has to be by grace. In Ephesians chapter two, it tells us that it's by uh, grace alone. Um, <clears throat> but this grace that saves us informs our morality, our actions, our pursuit, of just, our pursuit of justice. It makes us more into the image of God in Christ. So it's not just this blanket excuse mm -hmm. to live any life that you want to live. Yeah. It's this grace that fully saves us, changes our identity, so now we don't want to do the things that we used to do. Yeah. And almost to the point where we can't do those things because the power of the Spirit in us is so strong in compelling us to love our neighbor, mm. to love the sojourner, to love the immigrant, to love the foreigner. Um, all these biblical good things that you see all throughout the New and Old Testament mm -hmm. um, is people who are in, empowered by God um, by his grace to do these things. Yeah. So it's not to say works is to be thrown out the window. Right, like the um, end of the scripture, that we, it's not that Christ came to do away with the law, but we can fulfill it because God's living and working in us now through Christ. Yeah. And it, God empowers us by the spirit to keep, to keep the will of God so that by faith, 
we are now made in these new people, like you said, we can do do things differently that we did than we did before. So it, it reminds me, it's not how many Bible studies I go to or what choir I'm part of or uh, you know whether or not I have the best voice in the in the choir, whether I ask the best questions. It's about this relationship that we have with Jesus that saves us, so that we can do those things, so that we can uh, worship God in our choir, so that we can. Um, um, live lives that are pleasing to God so that we can uh, receive and give in the midst of Bible studies. It's not those things that save us or being perfect people, but yeah. it's Jesus who saves us. And the good news is that when we are ushered into eternity, into the glory of God, and we feel his presence and his bright shining goodness upon our lives, I guarantee you none of us will get there and boast mm. that we that we got here by ourselves. Yeah. All of us were hit our knees and we will not be able to praise him loud enough to shout his name in a way that he will find, like we would be like, God, you did this. Mm. <laughs> we will all know we got here by the skin of our teeth and, 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 and uh, it, it is by his grace entirely that we are able to be ushered into a presence so holy. When you read the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel and you see these cherubim and seraphim and uh, these, these angelic beings covering themselves and worshiping and um, they, if they don't feel worthy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> we're, we're, we're far less dependable. <laughs> and, and, this, and this will amplify um, the glory of God. It will magnify his glory because we will know in full how glorious this God is that he can save. Yeah. That he is the God of salvation. It is his salvation. Yeah. Um, and, and that's good news. And that's worth telling somebody. That is. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much again uh, for being with us, Reverend Dave. We appreciate you. And uh, thank you all for tuning again. Uh, tuning in again to this uh, episode of Sunday School Made Simple. Remember to hit the bell at the bottom so you can subscribe. Don't miss out on any new lessons. Uh, remember, you can get more resources at preceptsforlivingonline.com. Subscribe there. And uh, we'll leave you with this, that uh, salvation is not of our works that we should boast, but it's by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. He has saved us and, um, and made us right with God. Thank you so much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next week.